All of the problems covered in my videos can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link, you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I've uploaded to YouTube. I've uploaded over a hundred extra videos on this website that you can't find on YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. All right, let's begin our problem. Let's have a look at problem 11-1A, a basic cash flow statement problem. It says the financial statements of bait and tackle are presented below and uh, there are some financial statements. Nothing in here jumping out at me as being particularly scary. Cash, AR, inventory, equipment, accumulated depreciation on that equipment, all assets we would expect almost every company, uh, any retail company in this world to have. Uh, accounts payable, income tax payable, we haven't really talked about, but you know, income tax is payable. You can imagine what that is. That's we uh, file their taxes and we haven't paid them yet. Okay, fair enough. They've got a bank loan, common shares retained earnings. So income tax payable, the only thing that kind of jumps out at me a little bit uh, there, but not even a lot. Uh, on our income statement, sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, uh, operating expenses, Operating income, then interest expense, income before taxes, income tax, nothing there uh, that's news to me. They break down the operating expenses. They say operating expenses are composed of depreciation, salaries. Uh, they sold some equipment that's going to be relevant to us. Uh, and they had some other operating expenses of 64 grand. Okay, fair enough. They say other operating expenses are cash expenses. Well, when I ever, in, in a lot of these um, cash flow statement problems, it will look like this. They'll sort of say, okay, here's a couple of balance sheets like this year's and last year's, and here's an income statement, and then they'll have some little notes at the bottom. If you ever read the word cash in the note, you can say, okay, well, I'm doing a cash flow statement. Huh, that's going to come in handy later. So I, I'm just in the back of my mind, my spidey sense is tingling. I'm saying to myself, well, there's 64,000 of other operating expenses. And they say other operating expenses are cash expenses. Okay, that's something I'm going to just file away. I uh, will think that will be relevant information for later. Equipment was purchased during the year for 135 grand. Oh, there's that word again, cash. Okay, so that's good to know. Equipment was sold for cash during the year. The original cost was 60 grand. The accumulated depreciation was 45. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, and dividends were declared and paid during the year. I assume they were paid for cash. So we've got to prepare a cash flow statement using the direct or direct method or both, depending on what our instructor assigns. We're doing both because that's how I roll. Let's get to it. So I provide my students with this template. I will be attaching it. Uh, there should be a link either at the bottom of your, your version of the problem or somewhere you will find a link to this template. Uh, and you know, you should be so lucky as to have the template. Your prof certainly does not have to provide you with the template. Uh, they're under no obligation to do so, but I, I do it uh, just to make well, actually just to make life go faster. Oh, I thought I had this all sorted out. Let me just try something here. Drag this down a bit. Drag it over a bit. Okay, let's try now. Ah, it's not working properly. Just a sec. I practiced this before too and it totally worked. It's a little frustrating when a plan doesn't come together. Oh my word. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna start with the title and the title starts with the name of our company. The name of our company was Bait and Tackle Inc, I believe, Bait and Tackle. Uh, so just Bait and Tackle. The name of the statement we're preparing uh, is the statement of cash flows. That's already in there. And this is going to be dated for the year ended and let's see, December 31st, 2017. Okay, so we've got ourselves a beautiful title. 
time to move in and we'll, we'll do the direct method in this video we'll probably pause the video and then do the indirect method in the next for the operating section remembering the operating section there's two options for how to do it when we get down to the investing and financing there's really only one option so whether we do uh uh, indirect or direct doesn't matter for the investing or the financing sections they'll be identical no matter what so let's uh, let's get to work on this operating section and again we're, we're looking at the left hand side the direct method so the first line there is cash collections from customers and the question I'll ask you it's a question I always ask my students is what accounts do you suppose are involved in collecting money from our customers and um, well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, my students generally do well here. They say, well, a key account in getting cash from our customers is sales, right? If I sell to my customer, I get cash out of them, right? Like if it's a cash sale, I, I get some cash out of them. And uh, I say, well, what about when it's not a cash sale? And they say, oh, receivables. And of course, if I collect their receivables, that's also a way. I get cash out of my customers. So the two key accounts here involved in getting cash out of my customers are sales and AR. And the formula here for cash collections from customers is sales plus decrease in AR. And if you just think about it, okay, sales, of course, I sell more. Odds are I'm going to get more money out of my customers. I sell less, I get less money. So it should be intuitive that, yes, sales are related to cash collections from customers. Why decrease in AR? Well, if accounts receivable is going down, why does accounts receivable go down? 99% of the time when I credit accounts receivable, it's because I'm collecting cash from my customers, right? Credit AR, is, I, the, the debit that goes with that is debit cash. Uh, so decreasing AR means I'm getting more money out of my customers. I'm collecting on my AR. Increasing AR is bad for cash flow. And I'll just put this in brackets. Minus increase. Oop, I don't know what I was writing there. Insurance? No, minus increase in AR. Now, why is that bad for getting money out of my customers? Well, if my AR is going up, it means I'm selling them stuff but I'm not getting the money. It's bad for me, right? It's it, as AR goes up, 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 up. It means I'm not getting any of that money. It is bad for my cash flow not to be collecting AR. So increasing AR, bad for cash. Decreasing AR, good for cash. Here we go. Let's look at our company now. Oops, I don't have to alt tab out of this at all. Uh, let's see. Sales were 635 grand. plus decrease in AR. What did AR do? AR, well, it didn't decrease, it increased, right? AR went from 50 to 64. That's bad for my cash flow, so I would minus 50 to 64. The difference was 14,000. I just want to be clear there. I went from 50 up to 64. The difference between 50 and 64 is 14,000, but I didn't have a decrease. I had an increase. If I had a decrease, I would add it. I have an increase, so I subtracted 635 minus 14, uh, I should be able to do this in my head, 621. Okay, so that is my first line. I'm going to fill it in on my cash flow statement, 621. Oh, oh, oh. It's a positive number. Negative numbers on the cash flow statement are shown in brackets. This is a positive number. Okay, so that's my cash collected from customers. Let's look at the next one. And remember, we're doing the direct method and just comparing, I, maybe I'll compare them when I finish my indirect method. The direct method, second line is cash paid for merchandise. So we did buy merchandise. Uh, again, I asked my students the question. I'll just erase these circles because we've dealt with those. I asked my students the question, okay, well, what accounts are involved in purchasing inventory? And of course, a first answer is inventory. A second common answer here is accounts payable because most often companies buy their inventory on account. And a third answer, and sometimes I have to prod my students here. I say, okay, look at the income statement. Think about any account that would be involved in, in inventory here. 
cost of goods sold is the third relevant account here. Now, why cost of goods sold? Well, because remember, whenever we sell something, we debit cost of goods sold, we credit inventory. So cost of goods sold is responsible for our changing inventory levels. If we think inventory is involved in purchasing inventory, then cost of goods sold will be as well because cost of goods sold causes our inventory levels to change and causes us to have to repurchase inventory, right? If I sell it all, I've got to repurchase some. So our formula here for cash paid for merchandise inventory is COGS, cost of goods sold, plus increase in inventory plus decrease in AP. Now let's, again, break down this statement. COGS, obviously, if I have more cost of goods sold, I have to buy more inventory, right? If I had $1,000 in cost of goods sold, I would have to have bought $1,000 worth of inventory. If I had $100,000 in cost of goods sold, I'd have to have purchased much more inventory. Uh, plus, increase in inventory. If my inventory level is rising, all else equal, and I have $10,000 worth of inventory this week and $20,000 worth of inventory next week, probably I spent more money on inventory, right? To increase the inventory by 10 grand. So increasing inventory means we're spending more on our inventory. Decrease in AP means we're paying it for it, right? AP decreasing, AP going down. Why does AP go down? Because I pay off the payable. If I owed my inventory supplier $5,000 last month, I owed them $2,000 this month. Why did that go down? Because I paid them. Okay, so let's look at the amounts here. COGS was 320. Increase in inventory. What did inventory do? It decreased. So I'm going to subtract this. It went from 88 to 58. It went down by 30. Decrease in AP. What did AP do? AP did decrease. It went from 40 to 32. So because it decreased, I add it plus 8,000. So 320 minus 30 plus 8 equals 298. So that's how much I paid for my inventory, 298. I put this as a negative number and that of course shows up in brackets on my statement. Okay, let's continue. Cash paid for operating expenses. Well, let's look at our operating expenses. It says operating expenses are composed of depreciation. 12 grand. Uh, salaries, 50 grand. Now, I, I actually should note. Hmm. Let me add in a line here, real quick. I'm just going to pull this stuff down. I'm going to actually add a line for cash paid for salaries. Sometimes they say cash paid to employees. Well, that's just for salaries. Uh, depreciation salaries, loss on sale of equipment, other operating expenses, 64 grand. As it notes that other operating expenses are cash expenses. Uh, okay, so depreciation absolutely should not be included here. Oops, I got to pull this. I got to scroll up. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, other operating expenses are composed of depreciation, 12 grand. Well, that is what we call a non-cash expense. We're not going to consider it. Salaries, we are going to consider, and we're going to consider them their own animal. I don't see any wages payable. Uh, if I saw wages payable or salaries payable, I would uh, have to deal with it. But if my salaries are 50 grand and I have no salaries payable, I assume that to be a cash expense. And I assume the salaries have gotten paid. So cash paid for salaries, $50,000. Uh, let's just see if I can make that look a little nicer. There we go. Cash paid for operating expenses. Well, let's read on. Uh, loss on sale of equipment. Okay, loss on sale of equipment is absolutely an expense. Um, however, it does not belong in the uh, operating section. 
anytime we sell equipment, uh, buying and selling equipment, that the cash in and out related to buying and selling equipment belongs not in the operating section, but in the investing section. Way back in that first uh, video, in the intro video, we talked about this. We said, oh, you know, if I buy or sell equipment, I treat that as an investing activity. So this is not an operating activity, so the nine grand doesn't belong here, but the 64,000 and other operating expenses absolutely does. Okay, cash paid for interest. I'm looking here specifically for interest expense. And I do see interest expense of $1,000 right here. Do I see any interest payable? I do not uh, see interest payable. So I'm going to consider interest expense a cash expense. I'm going to assume that when I paid, when I recorded that interest bill, I, I paid it. Negative $1,000. Cash paid for income taxes. Looks like we had cash paid for income taxes because I see income tax expense, 43 grand. And I also see income taxes payable, 10 grand and 11 grand last year. Okay, so let's look at this. The formula here is income tax expense plus decrease in income tax payable and when i when i thought back to my my salaries for example the formula there would be salaries expense plus decrease in salaries payable but i just didn't have any salaries payable so there's nothing to decrease um so income tax expense forty three thousand dollars Decrease in income taxes payable. What happened to income taxes payable? It went from 11 last year to 10 this year. It did go down by 1,000, which means we paid off $1,000 extra of our bill. So 43 plus one is 44,000. So 44,000 is our cash paid for income taxes. Um, and I just want to be clear about what's happening here. Let's, let's actually walk this one through a little bit. Our income taxes payable last year was $11,000. So last year we owed 11K. Uh, let's assume we paid it off. Cause that likely happened. So minus 11K to our cash. This year, we had, uh, we did our taxes, we filed our taxes and our income tax expense was 43K. So, and we owe at the end of the year, we owe 10 grand. So what happened? We must have paid Forty-three, and we owe ten. We must have paid thirty-three k on this year's. Taxes. Okay, so if I paid thirty-three k on this year's taxes, I paid eleven k on last year's taxes. How much did I pay in total? I paid forty-four k. So that kind of tells me that this formula did indeed work. Okay, so I paid 44 grand to pay off my taxes. Negative 44, oh, oh, oh. And uh, no dividends received. I'd be looking for dividend revenue, and I just simply don't see any other revenue other than sales. I'd be looking for dividends receivable on the balance sheet and dividend revenue on the income statement. I just don't see it. So let's go ahead and fill this sucker in. I'll add up my list. I'll say 621 went in and all of these other amounts went out. Net inflow from operating activities is 164 grand. Uh, I'm going to prepare the indirect method in the next video and I'm going to hope against all hope that the direct method and the indirect method, I'm going to hope that they match. Stay tuned for the next video.